Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide, and if I sound a little quiet in this video, it's because it's the witching hour and nobody talks, speaks loud during the witching hour. So, last time I didn't move on to number 13 just because of my fear of drawing very large graphs during a video. So, I drew it beforehand now, and we will be solving it. The table above shows the noon temperatures for seven cities designated A through G. If the median noon temperature of this, these cities is 40 degrees Fahrenheit, then the noon temperature for city D could be any of the following choices except which one. So which of the choices are not possible for the temperature of city D? So we know the me median temperature is 40 degrees, which is city G, uh, which is city G. Since the median, uh, since the 40 is the median, which is also just the middle, if you know you want to speak in simple English. So let's keep moving on. Let's pick the bigger temperatures now first. There's 44 degrees, which is F. There is 50 degrees, which is A, and let me draw a long arrow here. Then there is 68 degrees, which is E. So there are seven total cities. There are already three on the large hand side of the median, so we can now look at the smaller number. So we know, therefore, that T will be less than or equal to 40 because it can also be 40 and the median would still be 40 degrees so we don't even have to look at the look at cities b and c we know that t will be less than or equal to 40 for this to be possible so the only answer choice that's above 40 is 42 and that's choice e so that's the wrong answer um, now we'll go to number 14, which is another diagram. It looks like a pizza slice taken out of a square, which was thought to be a pizza. Uh, let's stop with that joke. Uh, this isn't like this. It just goes up here and comes back down. This is 6, this is 6, this is 6, this is, these are right angles, this is 30, this is 30. Okay, so what is the perimeter, per, perimeter, parameter of the figure above? Well, one thing that you should immediately notice is that if you were to draw a line right over here, let's actually draw that line since it's, I'm using a different color now. If you draw that line, this will be 60 degrees, so they add up to be 90 degrees, which makes this entire figure a square. So the length of this would be 6. Now if the inner degree measure is 60 degrees, then this is also 60 degrees and this is also 60 degrees, and that makes a triangle an equilateral triangle, so that this length would be 6 and this length would be 6. And if those two lengths are 6, we know the perimeter of our entire um, figure. It's excluding this white line. So it's 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. That is the perimeter. That is choice D, which is the correct answer. Now we'll go to number 15, if I can find the scroll button on my tablet pen. There we go. Number 15 says, if m is the greatest prime factor of 38 and n is the greatest prime factor of 100, what is the value of m plus n? Well, let's factor 38 first because it's also a number very easy to factor given that it only has four factors. Itself, the number 1, 19, and 2. So the biggest prime number, prime factor, is in 38 
38's case is 19. So m is equal to 19. We don't know what n is equal to yet. That's the largest prime factor of 100. So let's start prime factoring 100. There is 50 and 2. There is 25 and 2. And there is 5 and 5. So 5 is the final prime factor, and it is also the, the largest prime factor. The second largest prime factor is, well, 2. Uh, that's not, yeah, that is the second largest. So 5 is the largest prime factor in hundreds, so, and we know that n is equal to 5. And now we just need to add m plus n, which is 19 plus 5 which is equal to 24, which is the correct answer. That's choice C. So we're speeding through these last problems now, just like a marathon. I'm kind of a little bit worrying whether I'm explaining it properly, but hopefully I am. And of course, you can still ask me questions. Feel free. Um, so 16 says, line L has a positive slope and passes through the point the origin. If line K is perpendicular to line L, which of the following must be true? So let's just draw a mock graph here just to at least visualize what's going on. So this is the origin. The line goes like this. Let me use a dark green for the main line, not too dark green. So this is equal to the line itself, line L which is equal to um, y is equal to x, even though it's not stated. Well, actually, it doesn't have to be y equals x, so it just passes through the origin. We know that. Um, and line k is perpendicular to line l. So we have a random line k, whom we don't know how to place. So it says which of the following must be true. So let's check off our scenarios. Choice one is that line K passes through the point zero and zero. Well, that's not true because it can still be perpendicular and be somewhere else. So that's a false answer. Let's try line K has a positive slope. Well, um, in this case, if they say that line K has to be perpendicular to line L, and I feel a humongous knees coming on, I need to refrain. Uh, so line K cannot have a positive slope, or else line L would have, have to, had to have a negative slope in order for them to be perpendicular. It could, line K could have a positive slope if it was, um, you know, if it was parallel, but that's not the case, so positive is also crossed out. Um, line K has a negative slope. That is totally true. Um, it can be anywhere on the graph, really. It can be all the way over here, but the, uh, the slope is still negative, and I'm sort of <laughs> stumbling over my vowels and consonants. Line K has a positive x-intercept. Let's see. Um, a positive x-intercept. Well, positive x-intercept, well, we already drew this negative example that it doesn't have to be a positive x-intercept. It can be a negative x-intercept. So that's c crossed off. And finally, we also have line k has a negative y-intercept. Um, the line, as shown in the zero, the origin test, is it can also be a positive y-intercept, so that's crossed off. So the only answer left that we can pick is the third one, that it has to have a negative slope, so that's choice C. Okay, number 17, which is, let the operation um, this thing, this upward arrow, be defined by a upwards rounded squared arrow b is equal to a plus b over a minus b 
for all numbers a and b where a is not equal to b. If one, I'm just going to do this as an arrow. If one arrow two is equal to two, oops, okay, that was a mistake. <laughs> I threw my mic down. If one arrow two is equal to two arrow x, then what is the value of x? Well, we can plug in these values into the equation. So 1 is equal to a and 2 is equal to b. So 1 plus 2 is 3 divided by 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. So let's just keep that in fraction mode for now. Is equal to 2 arrow x. So 2 plus x over 2 minus x. So let's cross multiply these. And I'm going to use the negative sign for negative uh, for the 1 because that's where it was originated anyways. So we get 6 minus 3x is equal to minus 2 minus x. From that, we get 6 is equal to minus 2 plus 2x. And from that, we get 2x is equal to 8. And x is equal to 4, which is the correct answer, choice A. Um, that's another hit on the mic. I apologize. I'm usually never this disheveled. But you know what? I will keep it right there to stop any potential bad luck from coming in my way and the microphone. So I hope this helped you with your SAT prep. And I will see you in the next video. And let's hope that our poor microphone doesn't get a real beating from our tablet.